Since the World Economic Forum started in 1971, we have lost about 50% of sea ice. How do we reach those not in the room? Because we're really preaching to the choir. When it comes to the climate crisis, there is no time to waste. It's an existentialistic issue for humankind like we have never experienced before. I'd like to be optimistic, but you know, hope is not a plan. We need global leaders to act now. Welcome to Arctic Base Camp at Davos 2023. It's our sixth year here. The team uh, has camped out, many of them, along with youth ambassadors, climate activists from Brazil, Malaysia, as well as early career scientists. It's minus 10. All staying here at Base Camp to speak science to power. We're no longer talking about what's going to be coming. We're talking about what we're dealing with now. When you talk about food security in Africa, it's a big problem just because of climate change. I have been given the wonderful opportunity to travel to the Arctic and I've seen climate change and its drastic consequences firsthand. The science is what is telling us about what's happening. The polar regions are actually the control center for our climate system and they are undergoing such rapid change. We have to cut our emissions in half this decade if we have any hope of achieving the Paris Agreement. It's clear that the forum is really understanding that there is a gap in their agenda. They've done a lot on nature and climate, but when we take a look at the cryosphere, the frozen parts of the planet, they are largely absent and we can see that this year that's a major change. If we take a look at the tipping points, nine out of those 16 are in the polar regions. I was absolutely honored to be at the Unlocking the Polar Crisis session. The poles are the fate of humanity, so many more need to be involved in those discussions. So for It's great to be recognized, but what we have to have is action on the ground. When do we want climate justice? When do we want it now? We will come, we will sleep in the cold, but we will be here screaming and shouting for people to act. We are definitely part of the fabric of the Davos Agenda on Climate and Nature. A mudança ela é de natureza profunda e ela dialoga com o grande desafio de integrarmos a economia com a ecologia. Uh, this is indeed the critical decade. Science shows the private sector and governments where action is possible. And those countries that want to do more but can't, how can we help them with knowledge and finance and other ways to be able to raise the ambition? We're running out of time, so the real issue here is about how do we scale up fast? That was the conversations that I was having inside. You have to have natural science and social science together so that we can really take a look at global risk and co-create solutions to go at scale. We have some new developments with the Arctic Risk Platform so that you can actually click on individual regions around the planet and actually find out how what goes on in the Arctic is impacting climate in that region. So I think if Arctic Base Camp had not been camping here since 2017, there is no way the Polar Agenda would be inside the forum. I can really see the difference and of course we were invited in as a key part of that. Because the reality, our lives here, we don't feel the impacts the same way that we probably would be if we were in lower lying nations. WWF have been supporting Arctic Base Camp for a number of years now and the reason that we do that is because it's a great platform for getting the science out to the people that really need to hear it, the people that can make change in our world. Isn't that cool? Okay. An important metric of success would be the broad-based media attention that we continue to have. Reuters, Bloomberg, CGTN, ITV and beyond. I'm honoured to be interviewed by Reuters and Arctic Base Camp about climate change and what we're doing to, to sort it out. What happens to rising sea levels and the communities that are on the beaches? The press know we're here and they know that we have something to say. These pushes to try to change our economy and try to change our energy sources, food production, everything, if there is this momentum now to really push that over the edge, then maybe there's hope. From a leadership perspective, this is about courage as well. It's the courage to believe in this without having all the answers. How can we do something for nature based on, on, on science, on good, solid, uh, robust science? So there has to be also a shift in mindset. In this age of you know, populism, people automatically uh, have a distance from science and rationality. If we cross some of these tipping points, we'll change the face of the planet for millennia to come. If we don't listen to science, we cannot make good decisions. 
I think scientists are badasses. I think what you're doing here is amazing. Everywhere I went, inside the Congress zone, up the vinicular, inside a party. So uh, really very much a welcoming of our presence here as, as an established part of the Davos agenda. Don't give up, keep on fighting till we actually get the change that we're all looking for. I don't know how many times we have to say it. Please act now.